So I think it's very safe to say at this point that 2023 was the absolute worst year for the Walt Disney Company, not just based on Bob Iger's lack of leadership skills, but also due to the ongoing box office flops that happened throughout the entirety of that year. And basically what was even more embarrassing is the fact that it landed, or it so happened to land on their 100th anniversary. That really was a big sign of defeat when it comes to Bob Iger's deliberate agenda impacting everything related to all brands that are all related to Disney, whether it's Star Wars, Marvel, or just Disney flat out in general, and everything else going on with the board of directors. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So, the thing about Bob Iger is that basically throughout much of 2024 and even a good portion of 23, there's been a lot of emergency meetings happening between the board, Bob Iger, Disney analysts, etc, etc, and what's been going on also with their overall direction with all of the Disney live action remakes, everything related to Pirates of the Caribbean, to Star Wars, Marvel, you name it. And we already know that Bob Iger's cost containment plan has been wreaking havoc at every single division over at Disney. Well, things just got worse when it comes to the board of directors and why Bob Iger has been freaking out behind the scenes and exactly how this may very well be the beginning of the end when it comes to Disney's overall ways at the company. Let's get into it. Now, specifically, of course, we know that Bob Iger will never admit failure. He will never admit any kind of concern in the short term or the long term of things to the general public. However, with Bob Iger's cost containment plan already resulting in the firing of thousands of employees combined with all divisions at the company resulting in smaller scale productions moving forward, one significant development now has much to do with Disney CEO Bob Iger and how he recently reacted after losing billions of dollars in funds after a recent emergency meeting that was held over Disney's financial situation that was started by the board of directors. Now one serious update coming out of this at Disney of course as the Disney heads into the month of June is how Bob Iger reportedly had a series of heated arguments with the majority of the board of directors all agreeing with cutting back on billions of dollars worth of funds for the upcoming Disney live action remakes after Bob Iger's cost containment plan became active for its third phase. The main reason why Iger has a major disagreement with the board and their decision is that Iger reportedly already called for cut backs that would result in shaving down hundreds of millions of dollars in funds for some productions. However, as of now, all the board of directors came to an agreement on cutbacks that were considered necessary for all planned 16 live action Disney projects that would adapt the animated classics throughout the rest of the 2020s and the beginning of the 2030s. The specifics of this is that the board all agreed that each project, including Sword in the Stone, for starters, would receive massive budget cuts of $200 million per project over the 16 Disney live action remakes, as well as Hercules in there, as well as many Lucasfilm Star Wars projects as well moving onwards. Iger reportedly tried to fight these cutbacks since he had already engaged in his cause containment plan's third phase, which was initially described to be the final phase. However, the board of directors all agreed that they felt those cutbacks just were not enough and that more firings of employees would also be on the way. Which is the one thing that Iger did in fact agree with behind the scenes at Disney. The drama at Disney has been so severe it has been rattling throughout all divisions of the company after this was made aware to those like Kathleen Kennedy, Kevin Feige, and also creatives and producers for the live action Disney films. Now with Iger officially now losing billions of dollars in funds, for these projects related to all of their divisions, already some members of the board are beginning to create a roster for the new Disney CEO to take place by 2026 once Iger plans to step down. And those conversations have already started just after Iger's cost containment plan was described to be underperforming to the board of directors to reduce spending. Already Bob Iger is demanding the board to backtrack these severe cutbacks that are described to be too drastic even for Bob Iger. In addition to this, a cancellation list of Disney movies are also being created by the board of directors based on the recent Disney analyst report about engagement statistics related to some of the brands. 
This is reportedly said to result in the cancellation of at least two Star Wars films and multiple Marvel movies in the process. Now guys, before I move on about this, let me just say one thing. It's one thing when Bob Iger initiates his final phase of the cost containment plan. It's another thing when the board eventually feels that those cutbacks weren't just enough. And now they're going back billions of dollars combined. We're talking $200 million slashed per budget of per Disney live action project, whether it's a Star Wars, Marvel, or Disney animated classic uh, getting turned into live action, which by the way, total up to 16 in isolation. That is massive. I mean, that just goes to show you. I mean, just to name three right off the bat, you got, of course, Sword in the Stone, Hercules, and even a sequel to The Little Mermaid that is being actively discussed right now that is already going through another phase of cost-cutting measures. So again, the fact that they want to keep doubling down on Disney live-action remakes and sequels to those remakes, I mean, nobody was asking for Mufasa the Lion King to begin with, and by the way, the cutbacks on this are also going to be involved in the marketing uh, you know, expense for every single project moving onward. So I think that's also going to hurt them initially as well, because when you look at stuff like that, how this is all getting embedded and grandfathered in, essentially, into basically Disney's outlook on what Disney plans to spend for the next 10 plus years on these projects. It just goes to show you that Disney is becoming smaller and smaller scale based. And even Bob Iger admitted to this a couple of weeks ago that that is 100% intentional. They want to make their movies more smaller scale, both in the film storyline and when it comes to how many people are working on them. This is, by the way, exactly why Pixar is losing hundreds of employees just for starters. That's going to all add up to thousands when you combine all the divisions over at Disney going through also other firings. But moving onwards again here, the board of directors reportedly want to focus on smaller scale budgets similar to how the film Dune Part 2 was able to achieve. However, Iger is not agreeing with this approach at all based on their goals of how they want to make their films cater to a specific audience. So the fact that you have a shakeup happening now after Bob Iger's third phase of his cost containment plan went active, which by the way was all about slashing hundreds of millions of dollars in total for many of these live action remakes, Star Wars films, Marvel movies, now it's resulting in billions of dollars of funds lost that Bob Iger is really beginning to lose his mind over. And I think at the end of the day, when you look at Bob Iger, I mean, this is why I like to call him Bob Liger, by the way. He always lies to the shareholders, lies to the customers. This is the same man that said two weeks ago that he holds no concern about the direction of Disney, both in the short term and the long term. And that any kind of concern that they may have is nothing more than temporary and a minor speed bump. All right, we all saw what happened to the Disney stock and how erratic that really has been throughout the past, you know, three, four weeks, give or take. It's not a good sign at all, and it is beginning to show that even shareholders are beginning to wake up. So overall, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Fill me in below in the comments what you all have to say about this. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys later. Yeah.